Eminem dissed his mum on a song so hard that she was able to successfully sue him. When did it happen? How did it happen? And what amount of money did she eventually get from him? Well, the lawsuit makes a lot more sense if you understand that Marshall Mathers and Debbie Mathers have always had a fragile relationship. When I was growing up, I hated my mother, mainly because we were constantly moving. Eminem recalls his childhood as a tormented time in which he was forced to attend 15 different schools while his mum chased boyfriends from city to city, adding that his mother only loved him until he was eight years old, and that by the time he was 15, she was demanding that he either help with bills or be thrown out of the house. With so much of Eminem's early music often discussing this harsh Detroit upbringing, it was inevitable that at some point he'd rap about he and his mother's poor relationship, doing so for the first time in 1999 after releasing the now incredibly popular song My Name Is, which included the lines, 99% of my life I was lied to. I just found out my mum does more dope than I do. I told her I'd grow up to be a famous rapper, make a record about doing drugs and name it after her, although when Eminem's mum would listen to this song following its release, she'd publicly defend herself by stating that his upbringing was the exact opposite to this. I'm looking at these and I'm going, what is this? I never worked a day in my life. We never had a house to live in. We lived on welfare. I mean, everything he was saying was like, I mean, I almost went into shock. I'm like, this is not true. Why are you doing this? He was spoiled rotten. Anything he wanted, I made sure that I'd take my last dime and get it for him. Neglectful? No. Pill popping? No. Welfare collecting? No, he needs to quit, you know, making attacks on me. You don't do this to your mom. And it, it, is, it is so hard. In a different interview when Eminem's mom was asked, all that stuff about you doing drugs and his rough childhood, is any of that true? She'd respond by stating, no, and that's what hurt me so much. I am a good Christian and prayer has kept me going. He was too spoiled. Anything he wanted, I would just buy it and I'd go without. I sheltered him too much and I think there's a little resentment from that. And to be fair to Debbie Mathers, there is evidence suggesting that Eminem didn't actually have a rough upbringing. Eminem's younger half-brother, Todd Nelson, Nelson stated in an interview that Marshall was always very resentful over not having a father figure in his life. Growing up, he felt like he missed out on a lot. But all this stuff about him being abused as a child is so far from the truth, it's just laughable. Debbie did everything she could for him when he was growing up. She bought him his first car, a Lincoln Continental, and ran around after him so he didn't have to take responsibility for anything. She's done the same thing with her youngest Nathan, and he's growing up to be an equally spoiled brat, with his sentiment also being shared by Eminem's grandma. Debbie was so protective of this boy. She never allowed him until he got in his teens to have a lot of friends. Whether or not Eminem really had a traumatic youth was yet to be determined. However, on the 20th of September 1999, at a time during which Debbie Mathers was conveniently close to bankruptcy, she'd pick the first lawyer she found in the Yellow Pages named Fred Gibson and file a $10 million defamation lawsuit against Marshall Mathers, stating that his comments had caused various forms of emotional distress, including diminished self-esteem, humiliation, sleepless nights, harm to her credit rating, and even the loss of her mobile. Home. When you can't go to the mob for being spit on and being called, you know, you uh, disgusting pig, it's sad because people are passing judgment by listening to Marshall's songs. However, the filing of this lawsuit only led Eminem's mum to receive even more backlash. Going back to the interview with Eminem's half-brother, he'd state that after filing the lawsuit, Eminem's mum became the most hated woman in Detroit. Debbie can't go out anywhere in Detroit without being recognized, and normally it ends up with her being abused or attacked. She's had everything from eggs thrown at her to cigarette butts flicked at her. She got so fed up with people cursing or staring at her that she'll only do her shopping in the middle of the night. It's a terrible way to live and nobody deserves what she's been through. When Marshall himself learned of the lawsuit, he unsurprisingly called his mother in a fit of rage. However, in the public eye, Eminem was able to remain cool, calm and collected, stating that he simply expected the lawsuit. My mum is a lawsuit queen. All her life she has sued people. That's how she makes money. When I was five, she had a job on the cash register at a store that sold chips and soda. Other than that, I don't remember her working a day in her life life. While Eminem's lawyer would come forward stating that the lawsuit will only be dealt with through legal channels, Eminem seemed to have a different idea as he began to use the situation as fuel for new lyrics. The lawsuit didn't stop him when he got hit with a lawsuit. It didn't stop him. He got worse. On the 23rd of May 2000, whilst Eminem was smack bang in the middle of the lawsuit, he'd released the Marshall Mathers LP on which he'd feature lines such as, my mum's suing for 10 million. She must want a dollar for every pill I've been stealing. Where you think I picked up the habit? All I had to do was go in her room and lift up her mattress, doubling down on the claims that had started the lawsuit. However, this is the point at which the story takes a bizarre, almost hilarious twist. As a result of Eminem continuing to rap about his mother in an unfavorable way, she'd respond by doing something that only a few have been dumb enough to attempt. Demi Mathers dropped a diss track on Eminem. With the release of the CD, it was one of the ways for me to get my feelings out there to my son and the public. The song titled Dear Marshall was released on a two track EP called Setting the Record Straight. This is called Set the Record Straight with IDX and Eminem's mom 
And it should be available in stores. And featured lyrics such as, we have a problem, Marshall. The past two years, something really went wrong. I was so excited about your success, yet so let down by your betrayal. Will the real Marshall Mathers please stand up and take responsibility for his actions? It includes the telltale line, Marshall, we have a problem. And to set the record straight on that lawsuit, Debbie hasn't dropped the suit, but as we said, she is working on a settlement. With Eminem now having a fair bit of pressure on him from the media, Debbie Mathers reduced the lawsuit amount from 10 million to 2 million with the goal of reaching a settlement. However, perhaps as a partial result of his mother's diss track, Eminem rejected the $2 million settlement request, instead stating that he'd rather pay his attorneys $100,000 just to make sure that she doesn't get a dime. Although while Eminem wasn't ready to give up $2 million that easily, Debbie seemed to have theorized another method to earn this money. As shortly after having her $2 million settlement rejected, she announced that she was writing a tell-all book about her and Marshall's upbringing titled My Son Marshall, My Son Eminem. After seeing her book announcement as another cash grab based on his fame, Eminem would escalate the conflict further by stating, if I could go back in time, I'd probably go back to the day I was born and kill my mother as soon as she had me. Also releasing another brutal song titled Cleaning Out My Closet, in which Eminem can be seen digging a grave for his mother in the music video whilst rapping lyrics such as, look at me now, I bet you're probably sick of me now. Ain't you mama, I'ma make you look ridiculous now. However, while this was the approach taken by Eminem publicly, his mother explained that behind the scenes, he was on the phone begging her to end the conflict, having stated, all I want for my birthday, for Father's Day, for Christmas, for all the other holidays, is for you to drop the lawsuit. And it seemed like after this phone call, Debbie was potentially going to drop the case. She'd publicly admit that I didn't mean to sue my son for defamation. I just wanted to stop my home being repossessed and clear up the financial problems that had been caused. Yet under the advice of her lawyer, who stated that the suit would be a good way to give Marshall a wake up call, Debbie continued the case until it would finally come to settle on the 8th of August 2001. Two full years had passed since Debbie initially launched the lawsuit against her son, and given how much pain had been experienced during this period, Debbie was likely expecting a pretty impressive payout, although this isn't what would happen. Eminem was ordered to pay his mother a measly $25,000, which becomes even funnier when you come to discover that in the process, Debbie Mathers was charged $23,354 in legal fees, meaning that when all was said and done, Eminem's mum kept only $1,646. Debbie Mather's lawyer stated that she was the most high maintenance client I've had in my legal career and that the $25,000 settlement was a far cry to the time I dedicated to her personally and to the legal action. Following the suit, Eminem and his mother wouldn't speak to each other for years. We don't really speak. When was the last time you talked? Um, it's probably been a couple of years, probably about three, maybe four years, something like that. In an interview from 2010, Marshall stated that he didn't even know where his mum was living and that it'd be very hard to repair that relationship. However, in 2014, Eminem released the song Headlights as an apology to Debbie, explaining that he was sorry for all the things he had said about her in the past. 